Good afternoon. Welcome to my laboratory. Uh, what I'm going to show here is how to determine the inductance of a coil by, reson by putting it in a, a, a tank circuit with a capacitor and resonating it and then determining its resonant frequency and then solving uh, for the inductance. So what I've done here is I've taken the Tesla bifiler coil that I've been using. This has about uh, 60 turns of each winding, so 120 turns total in there, and no metal inductance, or no metal core. Uh, and it's wired as a Tesla bifiler. Okay, and then the output, or rather the two legs of the coil, I've hooked to a, a one microfarad polyfilm capacitor. This is a good high quality capacitor. And then I've got uh, so that's the tank circuit and then I've got a bunch of stuff hooked up to that. I have uh, an oscilloscope probe hooked across that and I have a another probe going up to the uh, Phillips frequency counter and then I have the output from the function generator, the black and red outputs from the function generator. So all of all of those, the, two, the scope probe, the uh, frequency counter probe and the function generator probe are all hooked directly across that tank circuit. Okay, And I have the function generator set to produce a symmetrical square wave output and what I'm showing here is this is the the reading from the coil. This is just coming from this the function generator's sync output to show <coughs> excuse me to show where the transitions are. So uh, at the frequency that I'm driving it at right now, just for illustration purposes, you can see that whenever the the function generator pulse shuts goes negative or positive, you get a spike response from the tank circuit. Okay, now the ring down of the tank right in here is the resonant frequency, but it's pretty hard to determine the frequency of one, two, or three cycles there. So what we want to do is sweep the function generator's frequency until we see basically until we're driving it at that same frequency and when we do that we'll see high amplitude peaks so what I'm going to do then to show that is to uh, first of all let's get rid of let's get rid of the sync output and let's put this guy down right on the center radical there Okay, and now what I'm going to do is start sweeping the function generator. I already know that we need to go to a higher frequency. So here I'm at the 10k level, and now I'm going to just turn the frequency control. And you can see how the 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 amplitude peaks in there and then goes back down. So it peaks and goes back down. Okay and goes back down. So let me switch to a better time base and then watch the wave shape here. When we're way below the frequency we start seeing that a little bit of a ring and then another pulse a little bit of a ring. So as we approach the resonant frequency you can see how those rings collapse into a sine wave or very close to a sine wave. And where that sine wave amplitude peaks, and you get the, the uh, little bumps from the zero crossings right on the zero line of the wavelength then. Okay, so now that, right in, what I'm doing is rocking back and forth here. Right where that sine wave peaks, which is going to be right about there. That's, that's the resonant frequency. Okay, so now let's look up at the frequency.
frequency counter and it's telling us that we have 6300 6, hertz okay so that's 6.3 kilohertz 6300 hertz all right so now we have all the information we need we know the resonant frequency of the tank and we know the capacitance is one microfarad so now let's go to the calculator all right and uh, this is a convenient one to use here okay resonant frequency calculator there's the formula all right so now I'm going to tell it I want to solve for inductance and I want to use hertz for the frequency and microfarad for the capacitance input hertz is 6300 and input microfarad capacitance is 1 and now we calculate and then there's our result down there 638.2 microhenries now when I measured this coil using my inductance meter I got 685 microhenries, 685, 695, something like that. So we're within 10% of the value given by a commercial inductance meter here. Okay, and if I try to get a little bit more precise on the waveform, where I get a good sine wave and a peak. Let's try that. So that gives us a frequency of 6145, 6146. So let's go back to the calculator. And now I'm getting even closer, 670.6 microhenries. Okay, so that is how you do it. That's how you find the inductance of an inductor by putting it in a tank circuit with a known capacitor and sweeping the frequency input using the function generator reading the output oh there it is and then calculating using this formula right here thank you for watching